Hey guys, this is a Spark Lead Start Guide where I explain everything you will need to know in a beginner friendly way in order to get through the campaign quickly and easily. It is both SSF and trade friendly. There's about 5 minutes of late game Spark gameplay porn before the guide actually starts. Feel free to fast forward or else enjoy the show. Hey guys, for anyone currently subscribed to my channel, you're probably already well aware that I put out a ton of Spark content for Last League. I have videos on day one gearing, day two gearing, we go into some deep dives on how to make a well-rounded defensive character, we go into theory that talks about how Spark works mechanically, as well as the other tech that we're using. Now, all of these videos can be found in a playlist that I will be linking in the description. I was thinking for this video, what could I do that would help you guys the most for the upcoming Sentinel League? 
And I came to the conclusion that um, I wanted to make a POB specifically on how to get to maps in the first or second day. So this POB is aimed just on the leveling process. And if you want to go further than that, you'd probably want to check out the playlist. So we have the tree right here up until normal lab, then cruel lab, and then up until level 70. And th as an afterthought, there is like, this is the tree I ended up last league finishing with. And it's not really that useful because all the configurations are turned off because this is meant as purely a leveling build. So we don't have a lot of these things, um, but it is in here. Just if you want to see what a level 100 character might look like, if you want to see the real tree, you'd probably want to look at my last video from 3.17. But the main part of this video is going to be going over these notes because I need to explain the leveling process and how each of these links is supposed to be used. So for leveling in Sentinel League, we're going to be incorporating the tech used by top tier racers because it feels pretty comfortable and I see no reason not to abuse it. Uh, this tech involves using Leap Slam with faster attacks as well as Frost Bomb and Onslaught and Frost Blink and Arcane Surge to just zoom through the maps. And in order to use this, we have to be using scepters because leap slam locks out a lot of the other weapon options because we're using scepters there are two recipes we will be using the first one is to add flat damage onto our scepters so in order to do this we need to use a transmute on our scepter to make it magic we need to have an alteration and depending on our character level, uh, a level 8 would require a white topaz ring, level 14 magic, and level 20 would be a rare topaz ring. And once we sell these three pieces to a vendor, we'll get back the same scepter, but it will have flat lightning damage. And if you get unlucky and you don't drop a topaz ring, you can buy an iron ring from Nessa and sell it with a green gem to get a topaz ring back. So this guarantees that we can finish this craft. All we need to make sure we have is the transmute. All right, so you finish the queue and you're at character creation. Make sure you create a ranger, even though we're playing a Templar Spark. And this is because pierce support is crucial and the only way to get it is through ranger. So we're gonna Make the ranger, grab the pierce support, kill Hillock, get into town. And before we mule over the pierce support, just have a quick look at Tarkley's inventory. We need blue, blue, green, blue, green, or blue, blue. We want to see if he's selling any of those. Especially we want to see if he's selling it on a scepter. So we'll check that, then we'll mule over the pierce, and we'll make our actual character on the Templar class. Once we get into town on the Templar, we can pick up Spark immediately from Nessa and socket the Pearson to have our two link damage skill. Now later on in Act 1, we'll be able to add added lightning to have a three link. Frost Bomb and Onslaught, as well as Frost Blink and Arcane Surge, are going to be our main skills for this act. How we'll use them is we'll run, and then when we get a pack of mobs, We'll just drop the frost bomb and frost blink through it and those mobs will all die behind us and it'll be really fast. We don't have to keep stopping casting spark. We can just basically keep moving nonstop through this act. Now, flame wall and holy flame totem are really good damage amps for bosses. You just going to want to drop the flame wall underneath the boss. Same with the holy flame totem. And as you cast your spark, into the boss, it's going to get ignited by the flame wall and flame wall will sort of have like the those two ways of doing damage, just the natural flame wall damage and the damage amp on the spark. We'll also be able to pick up clarity, which is pretty important because 
Spark can have some mana issues. Now, out of all these gems, the one thing to note is for Arcane Surge, make sure you don't level it up past level one. So as you're clicking, just spam leveling up your stuff. Whenever you get to Arcane Surge, just like right click it, and then it's just gonna stay level one forever. And that's pretty important because if it gets too high level, you are not gonna get the mana regen from it, which is why we're using it. All right, enter act two. Now we have Leap Slam. So Leap Slam and Faster Attacks is now gonna be our main way of moving across the zones. And then still, when we find a pack, just Frost Bomb, Frost Blink out, keep Leap Slamming away. We will be able to drop Added Lightning for faster casting, and we'll be able to pick up Herald of Thunder and Herald of Ice. For Bandits, it's important to help Alira because all three parts of Alira help us a lot. Um, all right, so act three, the main thing to note is you cannot skip the library because there are so many uh, gems we need to pick up from the library. Once we're able to, uh, once we drop a four link, we can add inspiration, which we pick up from the library. Inspiration is a lot of damage and it also helps out with mana costs quite a bit. Now, we're going to be picking up another utility link here, which is Orb of Storms with Ice Bite and Elemental Proliferation. The way we're going to be using this is we're going to be dropping it near monsters. We're going to stand inside the Orb of Storms and we're going to cast a few casts of Spark. And this will proc the Orb of Storms to hopefully generate us a few Frenzy Charges, which damage amp us. And it will freeze the stuff around it as well, hopefully. If we don't have enough links, feel free to drop Holy Flame Totem. And uh, you can drop Flame Wall too, if you must. Now, Assassin's Mark is something we'll also pick up at the library. You only ever cast this on difficult bosses. It just helps us crit them more. And we'll also be picking up Determination. And in order to fit Determination in, we have to drop Herald of Ice, which is fine. Act 4, I have no notes, just run through it as normal, the gems don't change. Act uh, 5, there's a quest that rewards us with a unique jewel. It's important that you pay attention and you pick Poacher's Aim, and once you get this, you socket it in right here. This gives us plus one pierce and it allows us to drop the really bad damage link of pierce support and it lets us add increased critical strike support instead. So now our four link is blue, blue, red, blue. And even still at act five, your frost bomb is probably going to be clearing most of the trash mobs. So we're still just going to be dropping frost bomb, frost blinking out and just running forward with leaf slam. Um, this will hopefully, well, this will carry you only so far. Like you're not going to be able to finish the game with this. And once you feel like Frost Bomb is not clearing the trash mobs, and keep in mind, you're also getting extra damage from Herald of Thunder. So it's like Frost Bomb plus Herald of Thunder plus Frost Blink. So it is quite a bit of damage. But once that falls off, you can just drop this and you want to add the Onslaught into the Orb of Storms. So this will become a four link. And it's just, whenever you feel it necessary, that's when you make that swap. Act five, you can also pick up Sigil of Power. It's just another thing you drop down. So now when you're fighting a boss, you can drop the Orb of Storms and drop the Sigil of Power on top of it. And you gotta stand within the zone of both of those. All right, moving on to act six. This is where you have to stop and make note of your resistances if they're not all 75%. And we get a lot of resistances from the tree up until this point, so they'll probably be close, but they might not be 75 exactly. So you're gonna wanna teleport to your hideout and you're gonna wanna use your crafting bench to just craft resistances on random pieces of gear until you are completely capped out. As for gems, you're gonna get tornado at some point in act six. And this is just another thing you can cast while bossing. It is pretty strong for bossing, so this is an important thing to be dropping during the bosses. Okay, 
Act 7. After you complete Cruel Lab, this is when you finally drop your Herald of Thunder. So now your auras are going to be Zealotry, Determination, and Clarity. And your Clarity might be high enough level that you just can't fit this. That's fine. Just drop your Clarity and go buy a new one that's level 1. And you can just level it up a couple levels until you feel like your mana pool is getting constrained. And then just leave it whatever level it ends up being. All right, th that's my final note for leveling. Like all your gems should be pretty much complete at this point. However, I do have a wand plus shield swap note down here. And this is because as you're going through the story, you should still be IDing the damage shields. And if you see a really good shield, that's when you wanna just drop the scepters. Um, you can now use a wand and a shield if you want. You're not locked into using scepters because you can just drop leap slam faster attacks for shield charge faster attacks. And at that point, you might also want to... Well, that would be a a good time to get rid of the frost bomb onslaught just to consolidate stuff. And also now you, you can switch to flame dash, which is... It is better than frost blink, although... You do want the frost blink before this switch. So down here, I just have a, a final like consolidated template of what your links might be looking like. Just in case you get lost and you make a mistake down here, you can always just reference this for like act eight to act 10. Um, That pretty much covers my notes. I hope this helps you guys when you level as Spark. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate the first 10 minutes of a league start, because I feel like this portion is a little bit complicated and I just wanna make sure this is completely understood and straightforward for all you guys, because it is the most important 10 minutes. So as you can see, we have our ranger and we're just making a beeline to the large chest that's gonna give us the pierce support. There we go. That's why we made this character. Now we have to kill a hillock so we can enter the village and mule the gem over. Nessa only offers wands, I believe. So we're gonna wanna quickly check Tarkley and see if he has any, gem doesn't matter, any good links. So, scepters. None of these are really that useful. And the colors are bad. Um, these aren't really that useful either. The movement speed boots, no. Um, okay, so we can sell this trash and then mule it over. All right, now is our actual spark character. Okay, so we're gonna grab our stuff. Nessa is going to sell us the spark gem. 
We're going to check Tarkley. These don't matter to see if he has any links we need. And this is perfect, blue, blue, green. That's our spark three link. Um, the open one is for added lightning. I'll just throw this in for now. Um, this is garbage. Okay, did he have anything else? We can check uh, helmets. I mean, this is that's useful. Um, does he have movement speed boots? No. Okay. Okay, so after this waypoint, we're gonna go straight into the mud flats. And don't be afraid to take this zone a bit slow and kill the rows as, as they appear. Because if you leave too many rows alive and then one of them manages to stun you, you will die. And that's just really annoying, so. I make sure I kill most of them at least. All right, after we get the three pieces, we want to find the exit. Now we take the waypoint back to the coast. We're gonna kill Hailrake, and after we kill Hailrake, we'll be able to buy all the gems we need. Now we log out. Log back in. Nessa gives us Onslaught. Tarkley gives us a Frost Bomb and also Frost Blink. And Nessa will sell us the rest of the stuff. Oops. So with Frost Blink, we need Arcane Surge. So we have our two two links. And then there is Flame Wall, which is a one link. And Holy Flame Totem, which is another one link. And now let's hope we have the sockets required for these things. Um, blue, green, blue, blue. And we might as well do the wand recipe before we end this video. So I guess we can't, I don't have a transmute, but, or I don't have an alteration, but uh, to do it, you have to transmute the wand. And then from Nessa, we purchase I don't have a transmute to purchase that either way, but this plus a green gem and then another alteration. So, uh, yeah. Just keep an eye out for the alteration orbs. All right. That about wraps up this first 10 minute guide. I hope that helped you guys have a successful week start with Spark.